nutshell. This work is really imaginative. It's sort of imaginative design, really rare, and it blurs the boundaries between art and design, and they tell stories about the way we deal with things, in a way. And it makes you rethink about these notions and ideas we have about how to behave, how to sit, how to eat, how to be together. And Nacho offers alternatives. He offers alternative ways to deal with these sort of uh, habits we have. Uh, my name is Nacho Carbone. I, I'm going to tell you a bit from where I'm, uh, from where I'm from and why I'm here. If, if I know, actually, I'm still wondering why I'm here. But like, <laughs> everything is a kind of like a trip. So everything is a process. It's all about adaptation. I come from here. So my work is very much related also to the environment. The environment is, it needs to be always analyzed to understand from where we are from and where we are going and what we need to do. We see the sea in the side, in, at the end, blue. We see green. We see good food. We see good friends. We see family. Oh, wow, really nice. We see a lot of sun. We see the light. So like 10 years ago, in 2004, I ended up coming here. <laughs> I was landing to back to Eindhoven. My God, like, friends are not there anymore. You are alone. It's cold. So you need to adapt. To your, you need to adapt to your new kind of environment. I studied as an industrial designer. We were like really like, uh, I was trained as a, uh, to make coffee machines and uh, bookshelves. Later I came here and I started at the Design Academy. Uh, I found like the church. This church for me symbolized like my first kind of like place where to go to work. Actually here in this studio was born the first uh, piece <coughs> that I call the Pump It Up. It's this piece that is also here now in like the collection of the uh, Chronicle Museum. We're actually talking about the importance of an object being related to the human being and how like objects actually to become valuable for us they need to become part of our daily life it's an object that you sit down on it and while you are sitting down like this uh, animal just blow up next to you and actually they become like part of you because depending like how heavy or how thin you are actually <coughs> they react they become different you have so many layers in this project has so many thoughts that I think like every time that I just still keep creating, I just go back to this piece, to this object, and get one of these meaning, one of these layers to kind of like create a new piece. I mean, it just gives birth to the animals, it gives birth to my career. I just graduated, I get invited to participate in a competition. This is the object that I created, was a kettle. This kettle actually like it had a layer that it disappeared. Uh, when it was becoming hot. Whatever, this is not important. The object is not important. For me, what is important about this object is that like with this object, I won for first time an, uh, a competition. So I was, <laughs> that was the place that I won the competition. <laughs> Beautiful place, just graduated like six months before with 10,000 euros uh, award, I was feeling right on the top. I mean, I said, like, <laughs> life cannot be better than this. <laughs> so what was important at the end? Just the pure object or just the feeling that gave me this object? What do we create? For who do we create? And why do we create? But what do we take from this object with us, from this experience? And if you don't experience, at least just this wonder home. You cannot take the three chair home. You cannot take my objects home. But like. You can take like this idea. I just kind of like remember that moment. Also, we do like sometimes like random things in the studio. We don't know why we do it, but we need to do it this year. I mean, where I'm from, I, we, I, we don't have the autumn that we have here. Here, autumn is beautiful. You walk, I mean, <coughs> everything is red, green, uh, yellow, and then all these leaves like all over the floor. So like I said, like, okay, we need to collect them. Uh, after we collect them, we create this object, the treacher. Also here in the, in the museum, he's talking about this chair that start having consciousness. Also, I was starting to have the consciousness that I was creating a career. So, like, how we grow this career? Also, the chair is conscious. Like, okay, I'm a chair. I'm creating out of wood. 
<laughs> but what, I'm, what I want to be, from where I'm coming from, and this object, again, something very important. On that exhibition, everyone was asking me, like, from where did you get the ideas? And I said, like, oh, I don't know. And then, like, suddenly, I find back, like, this little piece that while I was diving in Spain the summer before, I just saw it 20 meters under the sea, and I had it with me in my pocket for three months this kind of emotional attachment, no, no value, but this attachment. So I was wondering and I was thinking to myself, like, how it had influenced my taste and my way of seeing and thinking to really create that exhibition. And then uh, also then a year after, we just explored with the idea of um, the senses. Then uh, we explored with the idea of viewing, with the idea of smelling, with the idea of hearing. And then the middle one is like the, this uh, concept of memoralia. That is like all these cubes that for me actually they represent one of each of these memories that, that we have to create who we are. Because we are what we remember. And the less that we remember, the less we are. So who we are, except like a kind of like a collage of all these experiences. This is for me like the origin of basically everything is the origin of my career. These objects are objects that want to be something else. It's kind of a reinterpretation of what is a bed, or a bed being something else. These pieces are made out of papier mache, and they try to explore three different uh, concepts. One is opposition, one is confrontation, and the other one is equality. It's this idea how we can really like be attached to something that is a, an animated object. A mutation, an adaptation of what a bed is for us. No? Sometimes a bed becomes kind of a shelter, this refuge to find yourself into this cozy place as you find uh, sometimes in your own bed. When uh, we are opposites, we kind of like uh, look back to back one, uh, each of us, we have a different kind of like world or way of seeing. The animals are a representation of yourself into these uh, objects. The tree chair is a fairy tale of a chair that one day it was asking herself from where I'm coming from, what I want to be. One day she just realized that actually it's the, the same material that the trees that are standing outside. So. Basically, this chair just wants to copy a tree. So this chair pushed herself to just become a tree, a new idea of a tree. We have equality, where actually we sit down and we see what is in front of us the same way. Your roots are never forgotten. I mean, you just take from where you are coming from, colors, shapes, smells, and translate it through the objects. The material on this chair is two different elements. From nature, the leaves, everywhere here on the streets, and sawdust, that is the waste of the tree, but that we find in industry. And we have confrontation, where actually like we see each other face to face to have a dialogue, to have a confrontation on our ideas. What I try to create is like, an emotional link between the object and yourself.